Hey everybody, this is Jonathan James with Hope, and I'm so excited that you're taking some time out of your day to join with us. Look, if this is your first time to join us on YouTube, make sure you do us a favor and take a click quick on that subscribe button and make sure that you touch on the alerts and ring that bell because that way you can get the most current information on our YouTube channel. And look, if you're just joining us on Facebook and social media, we are so glad that you're here. We have a great weekend planned for you, and we can't wait to share some of these amazing moments together in this virtual world that we're living in today. So thanks so much for taking some time out to join with us. We have coming up right now an interview with an amazing Hope Group leader who's doing some great things with helping families with uh, disciplinary issues, as well as ADD, ADHD, and all kinds of other challenges as it, as it pertains to raising a child with a bleeding disorder. You don't want to miss that. Kate Dulac is coming up to talk about her new support group. She's starting here in just a little bit. Right after that, we're going to have Gilbert Russell from ASAP Pharmacy joining us. And we have some amazing other sponsors that you will see just a little bit later. So we can't wait to see you. Come hang out with us right now. And we're going to talk to some of these folks and get ready for an enjoyable time together and hang out with us. We're so glad that you're here. I'm Michelle. And I'm Brad. And we're so excited to have you with us for our Family Education Weekend. There's still time to register, so go visit our website. That way you can participate in all of our breakout sessions, you can win some great prizes, and you can have community. Yeah, we also have a virtual exhibit hall where we're gonna send you on a scavenger hunt for a possibility of winning 250 bucks. That's awesome. And we're gonna be able to spend some awesome time with our sponsors. And don't forget about our breakout sessions. We're gonna have a cooking session, an art session, even origami, which is just gonna be so much fun for the entire family. We're also gonna be giving away two gift cards in each session, one for a kid and one for an adult, so you have an opportunity to win. You know kids love to go shopping, so here you go. We also have, just put on your radar, every afternoon and evening is really geared more towards your family. So we wanna get everybody together, want to get everybody on the couch, charge your laptop, have everything ready to go because there's going to be a lot of really fun stuff that you can do well with your family and we will also be doing with our families. Yeah, so we hope we're ready for this weekend. So sit back and let's get started. I've got my good friend Kate Dulac with me today. Kate, it is great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us for Family Education Weekend. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. 
I know it's really great to uh, be together, even if it has to be through this whole internet world. You know, I, I, I have a love hate relationship with these things. I really wish that we could be together in person. But um, at least for the time being, this is a this is a good band aid, right? It's good yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wanted to uh, really talk to you today a lot. I know I, you have such an amazing story and such an amazing journey, and we just love you and your family. And I'm really excited about uh, just some things that we've talked about. So I thought it'd be great as we're talking about this whole family education weekend. One of the dynamics that we're really talking about is how does the whole family connect to the challenges that we go through while living with a bleeding disorder and maybe some additional other issues. And so um, one of the things I know, you have a tremendous amount of experience, but tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you're affected by hemophilia. Well, so I'm from New Jersey, Northern New Jersey, um, and I grew up in hemophilia. My father and my uncle were both moderate A's. Um, my uncle has since passed. Um, we've been through HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, um, all of the above, and we've come out the other side. Um, so, you know, this journey started a while ago. I would see my father struggle with certain things um, and not really know what was going on until I got older. But when I became an adult and, you know, started planning a family, I wasn't as worried as maybe you know, another family might have been because I had seen that you could come out the other side and have a great life and have an active life. My dad never let him hold him back. My uncle didn't as well. So when I got pregnant with my son, Joseph, who is now 10, um, you know, we were worried, but it wasn't, you know, it really didn't weigh that heavily on my heart because I knew that we could do it, that we were strong enough and we had the family support and the family knowledge to get through it. Um, Joey was born and he was diagnosed um, we got the call a week after we came home from the hospital that as a, you know, he was indeed a hemophiliac, moderate A. Um, he's fluctuated between three and 1% throughout his life. Um, and, you know, he's been okay up until about six years old. There was nothing major. No, you know, one joint bleed maybe here or there. Um, injuries, you know, toddlers, he's got a little devil horn on his head from multiple falls on his forehead. We call it his little devil horn. Um, but nothing serious until he was about six years old when he got um, a hip bleed. And that sent us to the hospital for seven days. And that's kind of when my world turned upside down because it was hard then. Um, you know, I guess as a young child, you didn't see your father struggle like this because obviously your father is not going to um, tell you all the bad things about what's going on. And so, um, this was really our introduction to hemophilia, you know, like the, um, the downsides. Um, at that point we were on demand for factor. Um, and then, you know, because he really up bled like a, a mild until that point. And so um, at that point we started looking at prophylaxis and then um, that was another game changer. There was so much less joint pain. There was, you know, your seven-year-old goes to bed at night and tells you his legs hurt. Your seven-year-old's legs shouldn't hurt. You know, like that's, you know, old person pains. Like that's what mommy feels, not you. Um, so um, prophylaxis really helped that out. And then we went on the journey to the new subcutaneous medication and it's been zero bleeds for over a year. That's so, incredible. yeah. That's incredible. I, and it really does. I, you know, we talk about the special needs side, but, and, and the recipient, right, of that care. But I really think it takes somebody with special talents and special gifts um, and a special heart to be able to serve that, um, you know, the, the, the people that need that extra attention. And so uh, you, I just, man, applaud you so much for all that you've done. And I have to imagine that maybe your journey with watching your dad go through things and being sensitive even to your son's challenges was what played a role in giving you even more compassion to be able to be sensitive to people's unique, you know, requirements for them to go forward in life, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I try to envision myself as their family um, and do what I would want their teachers to do and how I would want them to be cared for. And I'm very lucky because the program that I work for 
um, we're a private school. And so, you know, the parents expect a little more from us. They expect um, a hug at the end, obviously not now during COVID, but they expect a hug at the end of the day for their kids. Whereas in a public school, those things are kind of frowned upon, understandably. Um, but we, you know, we give that, we go that extra mile. If there was a new study out that said standing on your head, you know, um, gives, you know, whatever, helps potty training, you know, we would probably do the research and see if that was true, you know, like you just take it one step further. And I feel like that's, and, you know, and I'm, I'm all in for that. I, I don't often opt in for things. I'm, I'm a skeptic. And there are very few things that I'm all in for. And this has always been one of them. I'm all in. I believe 100% in what my friends, coworkers, and myself are doing because somebody needs to do it. And, you know, um, we have the love and we have, you know, we have the desire to help. And I think my coworkers are doing a bang up job. I mean, I have never been more proud of people I work with. And I hope uh, they feel the same way about me. Uh, sure they do. <laughs> I, you know, I, it's amazing to me. One of the things that I just love about your story and your and your journey and your personality and how much you love people is just that you're so passionate about it. And that really comes through. And every time I talk to you about this stuff, it's just like, man, I hear that passion in your voice. And I just, I love that so much. It's got to be really fulfilling to do something like that, that you're so passionate about and that you love so much. It is, especially since I never thought that this is what I would want to do. I, you know, my friend always wanted to be a teacher and I was like, no way, uh -uh, I'm not doing that. You know, I loved kids. I always had little nieces, you know, and I, I always babysat and I always cared for them. And I always, you know, would take them to the mall and go to Starbucks and all those things. I loved kids, but that wasn't for me until I didn't realize it wasn't for me. It was for me, you know, sitting in a classroom, being a power professional. Um, it's not, it's not for the faint of heart. My, my, you know, those people who are on the front lines, you know, it's hard. And, you know, I have the easy job as the teacher, to be honest with you, you know, it's those people who are the hands-on all day long um, that I help instruct, you know, they have the heart and starting at that, starting at that level and getting in, getting down and getting dirty right from the start, I think showed me what my true purpose was. If I can do this and I can be happy doing this, then why am I not doing it? what's uh, happening, you know, you know, this is more fulfilling than anything I've ever done. So, um, and I just hope that I can, my body will hold out for me to do it until I can retire. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so great. I, you know, this, this is so inspiring. If you're watching this right now and you're thinking, man, there's just, I haven't found my niche yet. I haven't found what I love yet. And you're listening to Kate share her story about this. I have just got to say, that there is hope. I mean, that that is one of the things I keep thinking about, Kate, as you're talking is just that it's so inspiring. I, I have a similar story, you know, my story, but it's, you know, I, I was in financial planning and thought I'd always be helping people, you know, with retirement planning and long term, you know, I, I really loved that world and, and uh, never thought that I would be doing this thing called hope. Uh, full time, maybe when I retired someday way down right. the road, but you know, I was invited into this too. I think some people think that, you know, oh, I had this idea and wanted to start a nonprofit and it really, this was not my plan. You know, I mean, it was something that I was invited to into as well. And man, it's just been so fulfilling to see people's lives changed. And of course, I'm thinking financial planning from a wealth strategy point of view. And little did I know that I was going to go through so much hardship myself personally, that I was going to learn lessons of how to navigate a financial crisis, and then be able to spend the rest of my life being able to serve people and help people navigate those things. So I can relate a lot to that whole, like, I thought I was going this way, but now I'm going this way. And, you know, and it's really, but it's still fulfilling. Sometimes those happy accidents are the best parts of our journey, right? Absolutely. That's Absolutely. so great. Well, let's talk a little bit about, I know you're really passionate about you know, really kind of combining both stories, like talking a little bit about, you, we've, we've both seen and observed a lot of families that are dealing with hemophilia. And, and I always say this about on the financial program side that we do as an organization, I, I, you know, I'm always amazed at how many people there are that are dealing with homelessness and living with the bleeding disorder like that, you know, like 
I mean, okay, I don't like needle sticks. I don't, I don't like the regimen sometimes. I, I, don't, I don't like having to go to the treatment center so often. I'm not, there's things that I don't like, right? That seem to be an interruption. I don't like bleeds, that's terrible. You know, all those things, right? But then you tack on homelessness and all of a sudden what seemed to be very, very difficult and very frustrating at certain times in life now becomes impossible because you've got this other thing. And I'm amazed at how many people, I mean, month after month, we still work with people who are dealing with homelessness or near homelessness and, and living with hemophilia. You can't get your product at home. You can't get your medication. You can't get an infusion in a clean environment. You, there's all kinds of challenges. And I think the same is true. You and I both have seen a lot of folks in the community that are also dealing with various comorbidities. We're all familiar, you, your, your personal journey with your dad and uncle were very similar where you're you know, watching them go through the challenge of HIV has its own set of challenges. Hepatitis C has its own set of challenges that are unique, they're different. Than, and if you put those two things together, it can be really, really, really insurmountable. But, but we're seeing a lot of people sometimes with behavioral disorders, ADD maybe, ADHD, there's some, some learning challenges, dyslexia, there's also autism and some of the other things you work with. And I know you've really been excited and passionate about trying to help families in the community with kind of that are dealing with both of those challenges. So let's talk a little bit about that. Right, so recently, um, the more I, I am on um, different groups, different Facebook groups for moms or for hemophilia, I'm noticing more and more parents coming forward and asking for help with their children who either are on the autism spectrum or have some sort of learning disability um, or um, developmental delay. Um, and there's that challenge with behaviors as far as how do you give an infusion to a child who um, is resistant to touch? or um, has tactile issues, sensory issues going on? Um, how do you explain to a child on the autism spectrum what hemophilia is, why you have to get a needle all the time, why you're in the hospital? Going to the hospital can be extremely traumatic for a person without a disability, um, let alone someone who um, sights, sounds, noises, people, there's, you know, that is extremely difficult. And in my school, we work on things like that. If, you know, if parents call and say, you know, we, he's got a cavity, we have to go to the dentist. We will bring somebody in to pretend to do with dental instruments to kind of desensitize the children or haircuts. You know, we have a teacher who has their cosmetology license who, or we used to, she, and she still comes back and we'll cut the hair for the kids. Um, in a, you know, in an environment that they're used to where we can help and we, you know, we turn the buzzers on and we put it on their hands and, you know, we work through those kinds of things and just seeing the families struggling with not only hemophilia, but with all these other issues. Um, oftentimes I want to, you know, voice my opinion or what I think might help, but they don't know me. Um, I don't want to sound righteous. I don't want to sound like I know what they're going through. But I, I do have a background. I do have 20 years of understanding and speaking to families who are having very similar issues. I've had, you know, obviously I can't talk about students um, individually for confidentiality reasons, but you know, there are students with CPN autism, you know, um, whose parents have, you know, kids might have issues with motor planning and movement and body control because of the CP, and then you add autism on top of that. So I, you know, I have a little bit of experience of like a little bit of everything. And I would love to take what I know and help those people. Now, I, you know, I'm not hoping to, I, I, you know, go out there and be like, do this, do this, do this, and that life will be perfect. But I probably can offer some solutions um, to help get through some tough times or, you know, strategize on some plans to help move forward. I work with some amazing individuals and I have learned so much over the years, you know, PT, OT, speech, sensory integration. You know, I am not an expert in those things, but I do have 20 years working in the field with those experts. Right. Um, and I've picked up things along the way that I've shared. I've done those things with Joey when he was younger, when he was having issues, um, you know, with his, with OT issues, with, you know, grasping pencils or, you know, toilet training. Um, you know, I say I toilet trained probably 70 kids in my life and I couldn't toilet train my own. So I had to implement those strategies that I would have used in my classroom. You know, so um, 
I feel like I could offer a service to our hemophilia family that maybe um, they might be looking for. And, you know, if it's just to come together and chit chat about hemophilia, great. If it's just to chit chat about life, great. But if I can offer something to those who need it, then I would love to do that. I feel I, like everyone needs a little something and hmm. maybe that's the something I can offer. That's so wonderful. So, you, you know, the hope group format that we have is such a great opportunity for people to come together. And so for anyone who's listening that maybe doesn't know what a hope group is, we have support groups that we offer that really offer people an opportunity to get together and talk about a common need and really provide solutions to each other. And so, Kate, you're getting ready to do a, a hope group that will a support group for families that might be dealing with these types of issues. And really, it's about an open ended conversation. Now, one of the things that's been a challenge for us in the past has been that you might have a family in California and one in Utah and one in, you know, New York and New Jersey and, and Florida that all have these very, you know, unique issues. And, and so it's been very difficult to all travel to one spot and just to be but now that we're all dealing with this on video conferencing, it provides really an opportunity. We could look at it as a disadvantage, but we could also see where maybe it could be helpful in, in situations like this, where we can get together with some of those families that have a niche need or a niche you know, interest to be able to connect and really provide support to each other from a peer level support group that I think is really, really needed. And so we want to invite you, if you're listening to this right now and you're watching and thinking, man, my child has ADD and they also have hemophilia. Maybe they have sensory issues and they've been dealing difficulty with needle sticks of any kind, or maybe there is some apprehension to being able to, uh, to even you know, uh, verbalize what their pain is. Those types of things are all things that we want to talk about and, and really cultivate a support group around. And so Kate, I just want to say thank you so much for being willing to uh, put yourself out there and say, you know, what what your journey has been. I, I think you're a wealth of resource, even for, I think about my own kids, I, my daughters right now are, you know, are, are living with a dad with hemophilia and they need you and in their lives, you know, to be able to say, what was it like growing up? Because there's some, there's some unique things there, you know, and and so I just want to say there, there's there's nothing that defines a leader uh, better in my mind than someone who is just willing to help, is somebody that's willing to serve others and put others' needs above themselves. And you are such a great example of that. And I just appreciate you being willing to serve this community. And I'm excited about the support group coming. Me too. And I offer, I, you know, I thank you for thinking outside the box and, and you know, we willing to open up this new group and say, let's bring some people together because, you know, hey, everyone needs a little help now and then, or everyone just needs a shoulder or, I mean, a fake shoulder, a virtual shoulder, you know, or um, a virtual hug through, you know, social media or through um, Zoom or whatever you're using. And I think it's gonna be really great. I hope that everyone feels comfortable. Um, just come, you don't have to share you can observe um, and just listen. And then maybe one day you'll feel that, you know, the need or something will spark and, you know, we can help each other. I don't even want, I don't even want, I'm not going into it saying that I'm going to help everyone. I just want to bring everyone together so we can help each other. That's so good. That's so good. Couldn't have said it better myself. And you're, uh, you're, I just appreciate you stepping out to do that. So one of the things that you can do if you're interested in participating in this support group is you can check our Facebook page. We'll have updates on there regularly. You can also go to our website and find out more information of when these things will be happening, but we hope to do them with some frequency. And so we'll be releasing the first uh, launch of this support group very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And, uh, and also you can email us at events at hope-charities.org and uh, find out exactly when if you have some questions about that. So please feel free to do that. And, uh, and Kate, I just want to say again, I, your, your heart to help people inspires me. And I just love uh, seeing you uh, just be so passionate about what you're doing. So 
this family education weekend has been uh, just a lot of fun because it incorporates the whole family. But boy, when you have these unique needs, there's nothing that touches the entire family more so than than uh, when you're living with these unique challenges inside. And so, man, uh, you're 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 doing the work to touch mom and dad, to help the kids, to to help the aunts and uncles. And and I just want to say big big thank you to you and uh, and and to all that you're doing to help people. All right. Well, we'll see you soon and uh, look forward to catching up on that support group very soon. Okay. Bye. All right. I've got my good friends from ASAP Pharmacy with me here today. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Family Education Weekend. It is great to see all of your smiling faces. Thank you. It's good to be here. Great. Well, I wanted to start out by uh, sharing a little bit about what you guys do and how you serve the bleeding disorders community. You guys do some amazing things. And I just want to say thank you, first of all, for sponsoring this weekend and being a part of our Hope family. Uh, you guys have been a faithful uh, contributor to helping us to further our mission since long ago. And so um, it, we really could not do what we do if it wasn't for the support that you guys give us. And so I want to say a big thank you to you guys for that. And also just, just excited to be able to share a little bit more about what you guys do for patients day in and day out. And as we talk about families this weekend, I know one of the things we hear over and over is that the support system includes not only the brother and the sister and the mom and the dad, but it also includes your pharmacy, it includes your physicians, it includes a whole network of people that really do help support people in the good times and in the bad times. And so you guys do that really well. So I would like to maybe just start off with uh, introducing the hostess with the mostess, uh, Miss Pretty. Uh, on, uh, I guess it, 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 it sounds as it's described. So it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being with us and tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, well, thank you, Jonathan. Um, so I'm Preeti. I'm the pharmacist here at ASAP Pharmacy. And um, I chat and talk to all my patients um, on a monthly basis and sometimes more often than that. Um, what drives me is that conversation with each patient and helping be a part of their life. Um, sometimes, Healthcare is multifaceted. So oftentimes I'm talking to patients about things not even related to their medication, but related to their life because you have to be able to look at healthcare, looking at every part of your life, not just the medication. That's so great. Well, Kaylee, you're up next. Uh, it's great to see you in your sunshine, your yellow uh, self today. And tell us a little bit about what your role is with ASAP. Hello, my name is Kaylee. I am a pharmacy technician as well as the patient services coordinator. What that means is I basically keep up with all the licenses and the paperwork and all the boring behind the scenes stuff. Um, <laughs> what drives me is actually seeing relationships with Gilbert and Preeti and Scott with our patients. Um, I know that my job doesn't sound the most exciting, but knowing that I'm able to connect them with these people and keep them connected with these people is super important to me. Um, I actually used to be a missionary for five years. So I, yeah, I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions with a lot of different people. And for me, being able to see the difference that Gilbert, Scott, Preeti are making in these people's lives, it just really fills my heart with joy. That's so great and so needed too. You're doing a great job. Scott, it's great to see you today as well. And uh, tell us a little bit about what your role is and, and what drives you. I'm also a pharmacy tech here at ASAP. Um, my role goes a little Beyond that, though, I, I'm the person who keeps track of what everybody needs. And uh, when we're getting ready to send something I'm like, no, this patient uses this bandage. And um, I, I take uh, a lot of pride in, in making sure that everybody has not only what they need, but what they like. And 
and uh, making sure they get that at the right time and when they need it. And even if they don't need it, they're going to have it for when they need it. Uh, helping people is kind of what I like to do. And that's the way I can do that here at the pharmacy. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And you do a great job at it. So, uh, I, you know, I know for, for all of us, a lot of people in the community know Gilbert, but uh, Gilbert, you probably say the same thing as I would, that I, I, I am nowhere without my team and uh, you have an amazing team. And so, but tell us a little bit, Gilbert, about uh, your role, what you do, and then also what really is the passion that drives you? Sure. My, my, my current title is the Director of Business Development and Patient Care. So my responsibility is to, to find those, those patients, those families that we can serve. Uh, you know, my, my, our mission statement really kind of describes what our whole approach to why we're here, that we've been called to be servants. And uh, anyone that uh, I get to meet, I really feel that, that I've been in entrusted by God to, to make a difference in their life. And so that's, that's, uh, that's what we endeavor to do. We endeavor to step into a place in people's lives where uh, there's a, we can step in and meet a need. We can serve them, first of all, by, by saying we can identify with what you're going through. We have a service that we can provide in filling the prescriptions, but that's not where it ends. That's really where it begins. Filling the prescription is just one aspect of it. What we want to do is be an integral part of your, your healthcare experience. And so we have a pharmacist that, that she knows she has to fill prescriptions, but her, your life is what's integral and important to her. My passion is, is, is just loving people. The other part of my job, uh, I'm probably the only person alive that believes that I'll meet all 7.9 billion people before I, before I leave the earth and I'll meet them one person at a time. But what, what really drives me every day is to, to take a point of discouragement and hopelessness and turn it into an encouragement uh, to, to exemplify what you named your organization about, and that's to give them hope. Because once you have hope, then all things become possible. That's so right. good, Gilbert, and I really appreciate that. You know, one of the things that you guys always say is that you're the pharmacy that's always there to say a prayer for you, and you yes. guys really exemplify that day in and day out. You genuinely care. There's something to be said for authenticity that uh, is not found everywhere, uh, and so I just want to say I really appreciate you guys uh, and the and the work and the care that you uh, attribute to each person that you work with. Um, they really do become kind of like family, and you talk to these folks every month, and they are not, um, you know, they're they're not just a, a number to you. There's somebody who is a a uh, 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 you know very 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 important person it's great to see y'all thank y'all again for being a part of family education weekend and so we'd love to uh, be able to see y'all again soon and if you have any questions and you'd like to get in touch with gilbert or or any of the team uh, feel free to reach out and visit their website which we'll post in the comments here in just a moment but also um, i'm sure that uh, you can email gilbert and uh, we'll put his information available as well on the website. So thank you guys again so much for joining us this weekend. We look forward to seeing you when we can safely do so in person and this dang pandemic is over with. I'm ready to get back. <laughs> I hate growing. I hate <laughs> All right, we'll talk to y'all soon. See you soon. Bye, Bye now. Thank you. And here's a word from our sponsors. We're CVS Specialty, and you've come to the right place for specialty medication and one-on-one -on -one support. We want to help make living with your specialty condition a little easier. Let's start with getting your medication. Most specialty pharmacies only offer delivery, but with us, you have options. We can provide convenient, contactless home delivery of your medication, but if you prefer to pick it up, we can have it available for you at any CVS pharmacy location. The choice is yours. We also know that taking a specialty medication, particularly if you're new to treatment, can come with questions. 
so we make sure you have access to a nurse and pharmacist specially trained in conditions like yours. Together, they're known as your CVS specialty care team, and you can rely on them for trusted information. Send your care team a secure message on our website or mobile app. They can help with questions about your medication order status, billing, or even side effects. For even more convenience, use our digital tools to manage your medication. You can refill prescriptions, monitor order status, make payments, and much more anytime online. These are just some of the ways we can help you manage your specialty condition. We're CBS Specialty, and we'll be here when you need us, because you are our specialty. You've got to be able to live your life to the fullest. You can't just let hemophilia hold you behind. I can't say I've ever been a traditional hemophiliac. I rock climb, whitewater kayak. I go out in the wilderness and hike around. My name is Nicholas, and I am a severe hemophiliac, A. I was diagnosed at birth, so basically within the first two days of my life I was diagnosed. I, I think I came fully to terms with it around age seven um, when I had non-Hodgkin's Burkitt's lymphoma. My HTC doctor at the time, she also had cancer, and so I got to spend a lot of time with her both talking about my cancer and my hemophilia, so I was able to kind of come to terms with that. What I would say to someone who has hemophilia is don't let hemophilia hold you back. You can manage the disease with your medication. You don't need to worry so much about it. I mean, I've broken my forearm, I've broken my nose, twisted ankles, doing the activities I do but I haven't had any spontaneous bleeds, which is great. So I've gone from 72 spontaneous bleeds in a year to zero spontaneous bleeds in a year. If you're having a bad day, it's nothing better than going out and fishing or going hiking. It doesn't make it difficult doing infusions outdoors. I've infused on a kayak in the middle of an ocean to infusing on the side of a, a rock climbing base on El Capitan, hanging from ropes. So it doesn't make it difficult any more than sitting at the kitchen table for myself. You gotta try new things. If you don't try new things, you're not able to you know, move on and move past what you think you can't do, but you really can. I don't need to let hemophilia keep me down. I can kind of tell hemophilia, hey, you know, I want to go out hiking today, I want to go fishing, I want to go climb a 10,000 foot mountain, I want to uh, go with my buddies off-roading or skiing or snowboarding or surfing and I'm able to do it. Not letting boundaries be set by someone else but by my own self safely, that's, that's pretty much where I like to live my, live my life. For 70 years, we've been on quite a journey together with exciting twists and turns. Today, it may feel like the way is blocked. You may feel isolated and alone, but even on the darkest road, we know who to turn to. Each other, your journey is our journey. We're always moving forward with your long-term health in mind, and we'll continue to support you along this new path every mile of the journey. At Bayer, we create medicine that treats bleeding disorders like hemophilia, so Victor can keep doing what's in his blood. At Bear, 
This is Why We Science. Thank you so much to all of our sponsor announcements that you just have seen. I think those things are very informative and will help you to be able to learn more about the people that support organizations like ours to be able to do the work that we do. So thank you guys for sponsoring this weekend. Hey, look, we got two more amazing interviews coming up right here with me right now. I want you to see these folks with us. It's Julian Borges with Ethical Factor. You don't want to miss him. He's got some great insights about some of the things that he's going to be talking about in later breakout sessions. And then also Lee Hall with Drug Co. I think we're going to have a fantastic time talking a little bit about mental health and some of the things that they have going on this weekend as well. So hang out with us. We're going to get to some of those interviews right now. All right. I've got my good friend Julian Borges here with me today from Ethical Factor. Julian, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us for Family Education Weekend. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it is so great to uh, be able to connect virtually, even though we can't be in person. I am so ready for the in-person stuff to come, but I'm kind of getting in a little bit of a rhythm with this whole video thing. So it's getting easier. I'm not quite as like technologically challenged as I once was. So how, how are things going on your side of the universe with all your your uh, your meetings and everything as well? You know, I feel like I'm getting good. And then there'll be that moment where I realize I haven't muted my mic. And, <laughs> and <laughs> then I realize, oh man, I, I'm, st I'm still learning. So yeah. it, it comes and it goes. Yeah, that's so good. You know, I don't want to uh, steal your thunder, but you know, for anybody that doesn't know you, one of the things I appreciate so much about Ethical Factor is uh, that you guys really do look for ways to be able to invest smartly in the community and really give your time where it's most needed. But I know you as an individual really understand bleeding disorders because you live with a bleeding disorder. And that's a huge part of being able to help people uh, in the community because you, that's, I mean, just being able to have that empathetic point of view makes all the difference sometimes. Yeah, I think um, for people with hemophilia, a lot of times we suffer in silence um, just because we don't want to talk about it. Um, and so having someone who understands the ins and outs of hemophilia is necessary because you need the the rep that can say, have you been taking your meds? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, have you really been taking your meds all the time, every single time? You know, <laughs> and, and, and to kind of poke and prod and, and get that truth from you um, uh, the way that only a, another blood brother could do. So, yeah. That's so true. And you do that so well. I uh, am excited about today because Ethical is rolling out this new program that uh, I think is really great for anyone who's high school, maybe looking to go into secondary education. And so I don't want to steal all your thunder, but uh, I know you had a few things to kind of announce today and share with people watching about uh, this new program. Yeah. Uh, and this is kind of one of those for the whole family things. Um, we are now offering a scholarship. Um, and it is something that will go through the, the processes and the requirements, but just uh, in the rear view mirror looking at COVID um, and looking ahead, you know, a lot of people I think are going to finally go back to school. Maybe they put off going to school because they were, didn't want to learn remotely or, you know, their job is just changing. And so now they have to kind of look at these things. Um, and so we want to offer uh, a way for us to be a support network for the whole patient, not just when it comes to specifically medical, um, but all of the things that would make your life as a hemophiliac better. You know, having a good job that leads to better insurance. Um, these kinds of things are positive feedbacks that we really want to, you know, get our patients moving in the right direction coming out of COVID and going forward. Uh, we think that the scholarship is something that will really help people get back to work. That is so great, man. I really uh, am glad you guys are doing that. I know this is a huge need for a lot of people and uh, love to love to learn more about it. All right. Well, so here's our scholarship. Um, and, and the goal of it is really to uh, empower patients to get you thinking about um, your quality of life and the direction that you want to head your life in. Um, so the idea is not to uh, give you a fish, but teach you how to fish. Um, so that is what the process is aimed at. 
Um, so we asked kind of these questions. Um, so the scholarships are how we can empower you to give you a sense of a, yourself as a person, um, to understand the field that you want to enter and to make sure that you're kind of going in this um, aware, uh, to think uh, reflectively um, on your own life and sympathetically for others. Um, so we want this to not only be about how I can get myself ahead, but how I can help the community, how I can help people at large. Um, and we want to have uh, patients that want to build on their previous experience. So much like most scholarship applications, this application does require you to uh, put together a, a brief synopsis of why you're applying, um, what you're going into, and how our uh, giving you the scholarship will help you accomplish your goals. So it's not just a useless endeavor where you're writing a letter so that way you can give me your money. Um, eventually, you know, we do want this to be uh, a part of your thought process. So that way, uh, if you do get the funding for your education, it's a, a successful endeavor. Um, so one of the main indicators for this scholarship are, of course, somebody with an eligible diagnosis. So uh, that's first and foremost, somebody who has hemophilia or um, a family member is not eligible. Um, it must be used for furthering your education at a college, university, or vocational school. So there's some flexibility there for people that want to go into the trades or something outside of your normal four-year college. Um, you do have to be accepted at a actual program, um, and it must be the degree that you're looking for relevant to the employability. So we do weight um, professions, uh, especially something in tech or something in medical, um, to jobs where if you have hemophilia, you should be a shoe in uh, as a hemophiliac. You definitely know about medicine from being in the hospitals, uh, um, so you tangentially picked up some. Um, and, you know, technology is a huge um, growing sector. We see STEM um, becoming bigger uh, as an educational push. Um, and these are jobs that you can do from a chair. So something that hemophiliacs are totally capable of getting into. We do require that you send over your transcripts uh, for review by our scholarship committee. Uh, we do require a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Um, and you must be willing and able to attend community events like this one, uh, because being connected to the community is one of the outcomes that we're hoping for this, that you will be able to use your skills to help others that have the same uh, disability. Wow, that's really great. That's a, that's a really great program, it looks like. And, um, uh, you know, do you know how many applicants that you're going to approve? Is it just going to be one uh, or is it is it going to be uh, multiple applicants that you'll approve? It will be multiple. Um, this is our first year doing it. So there's going to be some reworking, I think, as we go along. Um, but as it stands now, we are hoping for multiple um, uh, scholarships to be headed out. That's great. And do you know, do you have a deadline for your scholarship application? Um, no, it does have to be, the scholarship does have to be submitted for the academic year that you're going to go into. Um, and we were talking about possibly having it go for previous academic years. Um, but those are some of the details that are being hammered out. That's great. And how do people apply? Um, so we have a link. Uh, you go through, it's a one and done. You can't save your progress. So you have to kind of go in with a little bit of um, preparation. Um, and if you want help, I'm definitely here. Uh, and if you want to reach out to me, um, I could definitely walk you through the process to make sure that you have all the paperwork that you need, uh, to make sure that you're writing a letter that will really gear you towards winning that scholarship. Uh, so I'm happy to meet with patients and discuss how we can make sure that they have a very successful application process. That's really great. And, and we'll be sure to let people uh, find the link. I'm sure that they can find it on your website at ethicalfactor.com. Uh, but we also will make certain that people have the information in the chat box right here below so that they can also find out what that link is and then get uh, in contact with you directly if they want to be able to uh, you know, get some help for that. This is hopefully to, to get people back to working um, after COVID and, and really help people 
um, get started uh, on this new path that we're going forward with. That's so great. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Please check the comments below so that you can get all the details on how to find out more information about this. And Julian, thank you so much for uh, sharing about this. And if there's anything that, that people need, I'm certain that they can reach out to you um, and, and, and uh, be able to get more information uh, at, at the ready availability. So is there anything else you'd like to share with folks before we go today? No, no, I'm just happy to be here. I hope everybody uh, enjoys the sessions uh, and do not hesitate to reach out to me. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for being here and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, bye Jonathan. Bye everyone. All right, I've got my good friend Lee Hall here with me today. Lee, it is great to see you. Thanks for joining us for Family Education Weekend. Thanks for the invite, Jonathan. Great to be here. How are yeah. you today? I am doing great, and uh, man, I'm just so uh, ready to be back together in person, as I know you are, and so many of us are, but it is uh, still very good to, to connect even like this, and, and, uh, and to be able to chat for a few minutes about just what's going on in the community, and I just want to say a big thank you to, to Drug Co. Uh, and your whole company, just because you guys have really been such a support of hope, and we really couldn't do events like this if it wasn't for your support and friendship in all of this. So thank you so much for all you do for, for our community. We really appreciate it. Definitely our pleasure, Jonathan. Uh, it, you know, we're here to, uh, you know, make the drug code difference, shine brighter and amplify those organizations that are doing the outreach to the community members and really helping them and meeting them where they are. And you guys are doing that. That's so great, man. Well, let's to, to start off maybe with a, a little bit about who you are. I know, uh, man, you are you are hemo famous. Everybody knows who Lee is, but uh, but let's maybe let's just assume that there's probably a few people watching right now that may not know you. And so, uh, tell me a little bit about where you're from and how you're affected by hemophilia and what your role is within the drug co world. Sure. Um, well, I I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama, and I grew up down south. And um, I have severe hemophilia A. And so I grew up in the chapter and grew up being a part of the community, uh, being a part of our national organizations, as well as our local chapters all throughout the South. And then uh, I started some global programs and have traveled all over the world uh, doing medical outreach, community outreach, and, and developing and creating camps. So uh, Hemophilia is not only in my genes, it became my career and my life's passion. And uh, at Drug Co, I've done a little bit of everything. Man, I'm so excited about that too. And, and there's a lot of good things going on. I want to talk about, you're getting ready to do a breakout session this weekend with, uh, with us uh, that I'm really excited about. But I know one thing you and I talked a good bit about is just, uh, you've got it right behind your, your, uh, your logo there is Mental Health Awareness Month is starting this month. And boy, it's a great time just to reflect a little bit about that. I know you're a big advocate and, and promoter of trying to help people to understand the framework of mindset that we're in as we navigate pain and pain management and things like that. So just, just tell me a little bit about what you're passionate about as we get into Mental Health Awareness Month. You know, Jonathan, um, over the last few years, we've lost a lot of community members to suicide, and it has shaken me personally to my core, and I had to take a look inward, and when I started taking a look inward, I, and I started having communications and conversations with leaders in our communities and fellow blood brothers and blood sisters, I was hearing this echoing sound of mental health needs that were not being discussed and not being met. And in this time of the global pandemic, we've all experienced a collective state of grief because we're all losing something, whether it's our right to attend an event in person and hug that person we love or that special birthday party, graduation or prom. You know, so we're going through something. And as, as you can see, you know, everything that's in that, that head behind me uh, from anxiety to depression uh, to post-traumatic stress, there's a lot of mental health concerns in our community because of the medical traumas we've experienced. And 
um, learning to infuse and, and just the fear of needles, the, the, the trauma of have, having had multiple bleeds throughout your life and now you're an aging male or female with joint damage and joint disease to where you suffer from pain. Well, when you experience pain that is so intense, it can bring that mood down. You can be angry, you can be bitter, you can be depressed, and it can affect your mental health and your psychosocial support networks. And it can drag those friends and family down as well. And so I think where we are in this virtual platform, you know, we're now having um, blood brotherhood groups and hopes doing certain groups and outreach programs that are made available to you, even if you don't have the ability to get out of your home. And there are blood brothers and blood sisters all across the country and around the globe that are going through exactly what you're going through. And we're there for you. Yeah, it's so true. And and there's still so many people. I mean, you and I were talking about this uh, recently about how there's so many people who are still not connected. They They have the diagnosis, but they feel like there's maybe some sort of requirement to be a member or to be involved in some way, or maybe they've got to do some sort of, you know, ha- have a certain amount of money to participate. And that's just simply not true. If you have a diagnosis, we want you to be involved. We want to be friends with, I know I want to be friends with Lee. I know you, you're dying to be friends with anybody who has experienced this life of him Philly. So if you're watching right now and you're thinking, man, I don't know this guy, Lee, or I don't know this guy, Jonathan, man, we want to know you. And so we want you to get involved. We want you to be a part of this. And as things start to come back around and we have physical events again, we we would love to meet you in person too. So thanks for joining us online right now, but we're going to be doing a, a, a profi, the pros of profi, right? The, the, the important tips of consistency, right? That is correct. And and, you know, Jonathan, we created this program for you guys for your conference, your profi conference back a few months ago, and we've expanded it out a little bit more because there's some new information, some new things that have kind of come out. We're going to talk about the history of the scientific advancements and the importance of indications within the label of, of, of the drug. We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of being consistent with your profi and having your own routine and your own ritual within your home. We're going to talk about the importance of documentation. As we are, you know, going forward, the insurance companies are becoming more demanding about documentation and knowing what we're taking it, when we're taking it, and how we're taking it. We're going to touch base a little bit on that, but we're also going to talk about those mental health benefits from the consistency aspect of when you are taking your medication prophylactically and you are preventing bleeds and you are protecting your joints and your muscles, then you are able to be more active. You're able to have those endorphins surging through your body. They're going to give you that happy feeling. Man, that's so true. And, and I'm, I'm so excited about this session. I know you did some at, at our last meeting, but man, I'm excited to hear about the new updates coming up in this version of it. But y'all are also doing a, a game. Part of this is going to be a trivia game that you're doing at the end, which I think all the kids will be invited to and be able to participate in. And there's some prizes and giveaways that we're doing with you. And I'm excited about all of that. Exactly. We're going to uh, have uh, 10 or 15 trivia questions. And we are going to have it interactive for where everybody can play. You can log in and the top two people, I believe, will get uh, Amazon gift cards. And then everyone that registers through our platform and through our exhibit booth, uh, through the HOPE uh, virtual website, uh, will actually be registered to uh, get some of our swag, you know, some of our cups and giveaways and whatever we may have there. So you guys have great swag too. If you register through that, one person is going to be able to get a, um, a Bluetooth speaker. And so it'll, it'll be a special giveaway for that component of the uh, exhibit, but it's going to be a fun weekend. Well, I'm super excited about it. And one of the things I love, you know, we don't 
uh, some of our, our meetings are more geared to maybe young adults, kind of like the Profi Conference was, or some of them maybe more geared towards leaders like we have coming up in June. But this particular meeting is really geared towards families. And so I'm excited to have the kids join us on the Zoom calls. And look, if you're watching this and you're thinking, my kids are noisy and they're chaotic and they're running around and, and making noise. Hey, look, I have four kids of my own. I know all about how that craziness exists. So you will feel right at home. And Lee is such a great teacher and speaker that uh, he's going to love seeing the kids and he'll know exactly how to keep everybody's attention. So we want you to hey. be a part of it. We're excited to see all the whole family there. Hey, I've been a camp director for many years and I come from a big family. So we're That's used right. to those interactions. Well, look, uh, this your session is going to be on Friday evening at 5 p.m. May 7th. So if you're watching this, there's still time to jump into this breakout session. And Lee, thanks again so much for Drug Co. and for you being a part of this. There's nobody I'd rather hear from than somebody like yourself who's affected, who understands what it's like to live with hemophilia inside, but also has the understanding and the wisdom to be able to help guide us and lead us into better treatment for all, as well as our mental health as we move forward on the outside. So thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you soon at your session. Definitely. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks, Lee, so much for joining us today. It's so great to hear from him. And look, we are not done. I'm so glad that you're here to hang out with us for the rest of the day. We will be here all day today, and we are going to do some great breakout sessions coming up right now. If you haven't registered yet, listen, there's still time. You can go to our website right now and register at hopeforhemophilia.org, and you can get these links so that you can participate in these breakout sessions. This is going to be some fantastic information that you don't want to miss. We're going to have Give It a Shot, a different kind of hemotherapy that's going to be talked about with Dr. Singleton. You do not want to miss that session. Just after that, we're going to hear from Dr. Dana Kuhn on Simply Health Insurance. I think that's going to be a fantastic explanation of how to navigate insurance needs, especially as it pertains to families, understanding what your kids' benefits are and how to navigate some of the challenges we all face. A little bit later on, we will have at 2.15, Central time, we will have Dr. Claudio, who will be joining us uh, with the Hemophilia A Patient Journey, and it's going to be extremely entertaining. We'll bring the kids, they're going to have fun to that as well. And then also at 3.30, we're going to have a scavenger hunt with a virtual exhibit hall. This is going to be so much fun with a chance to win a $250 gift card. You don't want to miss this moment because it's going to be a lot of fun to ask some questions, interact. Every 10 minutes, you'll get to join another company to be able to understand a little bit more about what they do and how they serve the hemophilia and bleeding disorders community. And then after that, at five o'clock, we're going to have Melissa and Julia being able to do erasing infusion frustrations for children. Look, you want to bring your kids to this session with us to come hang out so that they can be able to learn more about how to really get rid of some of those frustrations and interact with us about that time, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then at 6.15 tonight, we are going to have uh, a cooking session, which I'm so excited about this. Edgar is going to be joining us from Octopharma, and he's going to share with us a little bit about how to cook a Tuscan pasta. I'm already hungry. Come on, somebody. And also a Caprese salad, so I'm super excited about that. And look, the night is not done until you come hang out with our family and our crew with Pat Torrey from Gut Monkey, who's going to teach us how to do some fun family activities. So look, you don't want to miss this whole day full of, of fun and enjoyable talent. And look, if you can't come to all of it, we understand, but look, try to jump in on something. We would love to see you, even if it's just for one session. So get involved, go to the website, register. If you don't have those links, we'll text it to you on your cell phone if you need to. We'll send it to your email, however you want it, but we'll get the links to you so that you can participate and uh, we'll get those out to you right away so you can join us. So look, jump in, get the kids, grab some popcorn and come hang out with us for just a little bit and we will see you in the next one. Catch you soon. Thank you.